Look who is here. The Gary, man, congrats the myth, on getting your listing. The legend, Joe hey, Bogart. What's going on? Hey, Dan. You're on mute, buddy. Not like this is my first Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. Yeah, with all the coaching we get to do every day, that's a lot of fun. Um, morning. Exactly right. How you been, buddy? Doing really well. Doing really well. How, how's the wife and how's the family? Thank you for asking. Um, they're great. I actually have my daughter visiting us. Um, she graduated from CU. and Congrats. Uh, yeah. So she's, she and her husband are moving to Florida to Cape Canaveral. Um, so she, she got a degree in aerospace engineering. And um, so she gets to go put uh, design stuff in space that we'll never know about. She's what they call behind the vault. Wow. And, yeah, dude. So um, she got the ideal dream job for her. So we'll never know what she does. Like if I'm holding this up right now, <laughs> and I ask you the question, what is this, Chris? And you would say, well, well, it's a cop, right? Yeah. Yeah. And she would say, I don't know. Is it? She said, that's my job. So wow. Wow. <clears throat> That's super cool, though. It is. <clears throat> we're, she, she's, uh, we're happy for her. It's fun to have her here this week before they head out to uh, Florida uh, over the weekend. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, now it's I, funny. I, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. No, I was going to say, it's funny. You call this meeting a coffee meeting. I have um, something a little different than coffee. So, but, but, <laughs> wait, hold it, hold it. What I mean by that is, yeah, <laughs> that's... <laughs> That's just vegetables. So that's my veggies in the morning. So it's it's funny. Um, I do the same thing. I um, I juice every day, and then um, I also alternate it with uh, oat milk with uh, fresh berries pureed in it with a uh, little honey. So nice. I, I love it. I feel great in the morning. I've been doing that for a, a while now. Yeah, you know it's weird. Uh, and when Gary got me turned on a few years ago, I had to make a choice because it was a health choice. But to how they yeah. eat differently, um, and that was a whole thing that you're talking about that cleansing and yeah uh, yeah getting rid of all that stuff out of my body i thought i was always doing well then when i went and did that it was like oh my gosh it was a night and day difference of energy and all that other stuff because of that absolutely yeah so also, also it's about you know getting healthy and all that other good stuff um to hey, to totally this is this is this is our time together this is our group um so yeah I want to, I want to, um, I definitely, we're up, we're uh, 801 right now. I definitely want to get into it and I want to make the most out of everyone's time, especially yours. And uh, so Joe, I, I mean, I know you and you, you definitely are um, an amazing um, just person. Uh, I've got to know you personally and professionally, um, what you stand for, what you've done in the past and what you're doing now is super admirable. And um, if you could just give a, a short bio about yourself, what yeah. you've done in the past, what you're doing now, and then we'll get, get right into it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I've been uh, married for 20, for 33 years. Um, and I have, um, I'm a dad of two girls and love my girls. They're wonderful. One's 25 and the other one is um, 21. And like I just, I was sharing earlier, one just the 25 year old just graduated from college. Um, I've been in the real estate business for 26 years. Uh, Denver, Colorado is uh, where I, uh, I was from, um, and I have a team that I built there with a, an amazing business partner. Um, Stephen and I joined up about 10 years ago um, in, in together in real estate and allowed me the ability to, um, I was coaching prior to that already, and I had this whole quandary, like when you know your team, when your business hits a certain yeah. level, I have the yeah. right guy in your team. Um, that was my dad. I love my dad, but I had to move my dad out of that position and go hire, the, go find the right hire. And that was Steven who ultimately became my business partner. And uh, we were able to build a team where I was able to uh, uh, coach and do that at a high level, had a team where it was to about a six level team, if you will, fifth level now with the new MREA model. Um, and um, fortunately enough, um, we, um, I, I was able to, to move to MAPS. Um, I was offered a executive position there for at a corporate, which moved us to Austin. And did that for almost two years, stepped out of that role. I'm a head coach and um, I get to coach coaches as a head coach meeting and I get to coach some of the top teams all across the nation, literally from Hawaii and um, all the way to the, to the East Coast, New York, all the way down. So yeah, it's a lot of fun. That's a little history about myself. It, impressive yeah. resume, uh, but you're even better as a person. So um, <laughs> I, I appreciate that. Uh, what I want to talk about today is 
Um, and I'm really intrigued by this. Um, and I, I do a lot of research on it, on creating, you know, good habits mm. um, every day and how that is a direct indicator of accomplishing your goals. And I kind of want to dig into that um, on how you've created, um, you know, successful habits over, you know, your career and, and how, how, what does your day look like? Yeah. Um, so funny enough, um, I, I, I've always resonate with Gary when Gary said he's not a disciplined person. He's a person of certain disciplines. Yeah. Well, I'm, 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 I'm like you, I'm a, I'm a journeyman, I'm a journey women, journeyman. Yeah. And, um, one of the books was a really big game. Oh, great book. And that's why I went and grabbed this while you were talking. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm also in his, you can also sign up for his uh, weekly book club. He does and sends you information. Um, James clear, really stud guy. Um, so to answer your question is, you know, James breaks down a lot of sections in here, but the biggest thing is, um, which his is alignment with me. And that is, um, if, uh, have you ever read the book switch by the yes. brother? Okay. Yep. Switch and both James clear have some real close things that resonate. And that is we, um, they talk about shrink the change and James talks about, um, we, we, we have it stack. First, how we get rid of old habits is replace them with new ones. But what we do is, um, like, let's say I do really well every morning, which I do. I, <clears throat> I have a ritual where I get up and I go do a workout. Um, and I do that routine, but I want to lace something in there in between, which is um, thinking time. So time after I'm done just to meditate, right? So he said, instead of where it's really a challenge, um, like where do I fit this in? You stack it already to a, a habit that you're doing automatically now. And then you add that in there. And let's just start with one minute. And this is where it resonates with the Heath brothers. Um, when they talk about switch is they talk about just make it a one minute, two minute thing in the beginning. Don't, don't say I'm going to do 30 minutes, um, that kind of deal. So that's the, that's the habits or the disciplines I've learned to start that, that I've been working on and do. That's okay. awesome. Yeah. So um, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Well, so part of that is, um, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really big about how many of you got the MREA book with you? Okay. So grab your MREA book. And for those who are, um, I can't get a C I'm, I'm bummed. I'd love to see Anna, Ellen, uh, Solon. I, I met you before. Um, and anyway, you can, but if you're at a place where you're in your pajamas or something, I totally get it. Totally cool. Um, uh, so anyway, go to page 308. Um, so here's what uh, I did with the teams that I coached right in the beginning of COVID. And this is something we just practice ongoing. And as Gary's in, and Gary talks about the energy plan, right? And I'm loving it. Valerie's shaking her head like, yep. Um, so here, here's the things I've looked at in certain disciplines that we can talk about. Meditate. Number one is meditate and pray. Number two is exercise and eat. That's the physical energy. By the way, the meditating and praying, spiritual energy, real big. Um, hugs, hug, kiss, and laugh. That's, that's the emotional energy. And now that COVID's over with or kind of shrinking away, it's, it's okay to go hug people, uh, certain people. Um, plan, plan and calendar. So, and, and that's really important. That's the mental energy. And the final part is then lead generate. Okay. When you look at those five areas, you, what you want to ask yourself is which, what is the one area where, um, that stands out to me that I would like to go make a, a 1% improvement. So in the book of atomic habits, and for those who have read it, you know, James talks about this whole process of a, just a 1% improvement on a daily basis. You would be at the end of a calendar or a full year, you would be 37 times better than where you were in your life in that same spot a year ago. Mike, good to see you, sir. Um, and so, uh, Solon, oh, see, he's not in his pajamas. Good to see you, buddy. <laughs> I see him moving his lips, but I can't hear him. Chris, Chris, Chris will tell you it was more of a hair thing than it was a. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I quickly jumped in the shower after this morning. So I get it. I was up a little bit earlier. Um, so pick one. That's the key. So the, to start off your day, um, that's all done before 11 o'clock, right? The, all the stuff. Um, and the lead generation, depending, maybe it's 12 o'clock. That being said is, what's the one for you that stands out? So I'd like to hear from somebody. Somebody says, yeah, here's the one that stands out for me. The praying. I would say praying for me. Uh, I, I, I definitely, uh, 
Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm me meditate. I, I think that if your mind's not right, nothing else works. Yeah. So for you, for meditation for you, Chris and Solomon for you, and you were saying praying. Um, so when you say meditate, what does that look like for you? What do you want out of that? For me, it's um, just saying certain affirmations. Um, you know, every morning to get my mind right, mm -hmm. and it depends on how I feel that day because you don't feel the same way every day. Yeah. Um, if I'm having, if I'm having a um, if I had a hard day the day before, it's like, I don't want this day to be like yesterday. I want it to be even better. And then what are the affirmations I'm saying to myself that gets my mind right that will directly affect the rest of the day? Yeah, I love that. Thanks for sharing that, Chris. Yeah. That's great. So here, here's what you want to look at. Whatever one stands out for you is then um, out, of that, out of that five, then ask the question of like, how can I go form that as a habit or make the, create that into a habit? So for me, um, and a long time ago, for a while back ago, it was for me just to do meditating, pray, right? And specifically journaling. Um, I, I, I am, was not, and I truly was not one of those journal people. In fact, when, when, when my guy who was, um, I'm involved in this group in Denver, it's called CORE. Um, when he proposed this seven years ago, I just looked at him and said, nah, I, I don't do that stuff. I, I, I don't do that well. And he challenged me. And when I got clarity about like, no, the importance of what that looked like for me in journaling, I did a habit stack. So all I did was after my workout, which is totally funny enough, I got my light. I'm going to keep on looking out here because I had my light on. I left um, after my meditation this morning. After my workout, I came in and I would sit down. And all I did was for just a couple minutes was journal and think, and that was it. And then I just did that. And I just started slowly stacking that up where now it just depends on like on the weekend, it's an hour, hour and a half on work day. It's usually 30 minutes, that kind of deal where I cut it off. But the point is find the one that's wherever that is. If that's for you, exercise and eat, whatever one you want to pick is pick it, shrink the change, make it small, and then just start building on that one by one. You know, what, you know what's funny, Joe? There's so many people that miss page 308 in MREA, the energy plan, right? Everyone focus on, focuses on the four miles, which are great, right? Obviously very important, but a lot, you never, you don't hear a lot of people talking about the energy plan. I'm so great that, so glad that you brought that up. Well, well, uh, it, it is truly the, I mean, especially during this time, and Gary was so transparent, right? For all of us, I really resonated during this time when we were from March till just recently. Um, first few weeks really wasn't a problem. It was, you know, that working out, doing all that routine. Yet our jobs required more energy and was pulling more out of us than normal. And I noticed my energy level going down. So I actually had to make adjustments in what I was doing in my workout routine because I didn't have my trainer that I was going to go see to go do what I wanted to go do. I had to recreate that. How many of you can re relate to that? I raised my hand. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's courting how quickly you choose to pivot and then who's your accountability partner, right? Um, and, and by the way, if you, and it can't be your spouse, it can't be your partner. It really needs to be someone outside um, out of that. I, I got to say, I got to stop for a second because I'm seeing one of my favorite guys I love and that's Matt Teeter. Um, I just got to say, Matt, <laughs> good to see you, buddy. Good morning. Good morning to you too, by the way. What's up, Matt? Hey guys, I normally have a call right now and I didn't, they canceled for this morning. So I was like, well, let me go hear what Joe has to say this morning. <laughs> <laughs> that can never be a bad thing. No. Not at all. No, Not it's all six o'clock in the morning for Joe, so he's up and ready to go. <laughs> Good to see you. Good to see you, Matt. Um, so, uh, so here, here's here's the thought. Um, who is that person in your life who stands in the gap for you when you're not willing to stand in that sometimes yourself? That there should be bit. someone like that in your life, and if you don't have someone like that in your life, go go either find them or go make that person that person in your life. I love that. I got to okay. use that one. Yeah, I, I literally have, and I can show you a text. Well, I have um, a, a really good buddy of mine who um, just lost his wife. And um, Sorry to hear that. Yeah, it's, it was a tough journey. She fought the battle well. Um, and, and he's one of the guys who will call me on my crap. And uh, is that okay? Say we're crap. Of like, course. Absolutely. This is yeah. not syndicated. Yeah, so I could So I have, uh, and it is recorded. But, um, so anyway, <laughs> um, I um, I have seven men like that in my life, and he's one of them. And um, and when we had a great talk the other day on Sunday, and 
and I was telling him about what, um, what I appreciate about him and this new journey he's going to be experiencing in his life um, as uh, we go next week uh, to, uh, to have a celebration of her life. And what I love about this guy is that this is a guy that did not rub me well. Uh, we, are at, we are opposites of one another. Yeah. In and, and many ways. And, and yet, super smart guy, super um, uh, guy who is willing to go stand in your face when you need it. Um, and I want people like that in my life. Um, be, and, and, and the reason why is because I, 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 want, I want my life to continue to be better than I was before, because that goes to my why on page 77, right, in, in MREA. When you look at pages 70 to 80, and that little, on um, page 77, it shows the model where crescendos up. Um, Valerie, you're good. Um, and, and, then, and then it crescendos up to the top. And it's about being your, not for me, it's about being my best, meaning being the best dad I can be, the best friend I can be, the best business owner I can be, those kind of things. And so I want those guys in my life, and women too, that hear me out for me, um, why I have those men, is, it's to be quite frank, it's because I'm not sexually attracted to guys. And so when we have these great conversations, I have this great iron sharpens iron type of moment, if that makes sense, right? So yeah. they keep, yeah. my wife is that person for me. And I like that. So, but I, mean, I am sexually attracted to my wife. So I like that kind of stuff. <laughs> so that's a different world. I'm sorry for being, if that's too vulnerable. It's all, it's, it's all, it's all good, Joe. So, so here, here's, here, so who's that man or woman in your life? That's that, and that's why I give you that example of Scott. Because he, he was the guy that rubbed me wrong, and now he's one of my best friends. And he's been that way for many years. Because we were willing to go have a conversation to get understanding with one another, to realize I had a lot of respect for him, even though we didn't um, personality-wise click. And then through time, we found commonality, and we both learned how to, uh, we still constantly, when we, when we talk, um, it's... Yes, we have these bonding times, but we also have these times where we're just going to help push each other. So I was that guy for him on Sunday. He needed some conversation to have happen because of his mental thinking about stuff that he needed to clear the, his head. And I was, he knew that he could call me up and pick up the phone. Okay, so I'll stop there. Does that give you, you know, a little bit of that accountability partner mindset? Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, if you have an accountability partner and you agree on everything, that's, that's not a good thing. <laughs> Could be group think. It could be a problem. Yeah, that's true. And and you're right about that. Like my, um, um, I have a I have a new business partner where we're starting another business with. And with him, he and I are similarly wired, and we also think different. And he pushes me in another way that my other business partner did. And so and and that was the good thing, right? So there's there's two different minds, two different opinions, and out of that, good stuff will come as you just kind of have fierce conversations and pound stuff out. So that should be that person in your life. That's great stuff. How are you, how are you coaching people right now, you know, kind of coming out of COVID right now that, you know, their mindset is messed up and given what else is going on in the world today, how are you getting people out of that funk right now and getting them back on the horse, so to speak? Okay. Um, great question. Uh, there's, there's four things I put down on this. And the first one we've already addressed and it's mindset. So we talked about some of that already. Um, we're, we're going to talk about why that came on board. So it's mindset, systems, skills, and then your commitment. And so, and we just chunk it down to this way. I had, um, the, I had the majority of the teams I was coaching with, um, I'd say three quarters of them, Chris, were waiting for this day. They knew it was, they didn't know this was going to be it, but they were sure. ready for the moment. Um, and literally, I'll share this with you. So this team is a team I coach, and um, they're in Austin. And uh, literally, the day after um, when we went in total shutdown, this is what they sent to their team. This is a system. So I want you to see this. The system was they came in and said they did a new pivot. And first of all, they addressed the mindset. I love this quote. Attitude will be the difference maker of surviving and thriving. And we feel blessed to be in partnership with each one of you and feel grateful to the core, uh, for the core group we have so we may thrive into greatness God created us to be in. So do you see how they framed already? So the key thing is in your life right now, with even now with the market shifting again, is what is your mindset? What is your belief? And whatever that is, you're making a declaration. 
and they made a declaration of what their team was going to perform. By the way, this team had the best May and they're having their best June ever in their business. So no, it's, it's no accident. No accident. That's right. So because remember, they're just like us right now. They were all on Zoom. They immediately, everything happened that fast. Here's what they came in with. They said, here's our new schedule. Here's how we're going to operate. And we're going to do Zoom calls daily from 8.15 to 8.45. They're doing role play practice from 8.45 to 9. They do their team huddle. And what they're doing right there is they're checking in what's their number one priority of the day. Uh, where will your lead uh, gen be focused? So they had clarity that we already put together. So this system was ready to roll for this moment. 11.45, I'm sorry, 11.15, 11.45, they're doing a review. What were the results would have happened after nine to that 11 o'clock? They're checking in how many contacts they made, what appointments were set. Everyone's doing a check-in with each other. And then they would come in the afternoon. If one to three o'clock, they, they had daily appointments ready to go, they're lined up, already set. From every Tuesday and Thursday, they had their own 12 to one role plays and scripts that were going on. So this was the plan that they had put in. And then this is what I love. Here's the expectations of how we're gonna communicate as a team. Wow. So now we are laying out, so this is a system you can see again, and we're talking about, the, so we've done the system and the process, how things are gonna happen. And then we have the mindset again, of what we're gonna expect from one another. And here's a commitment, and here's what they're gonna ask them to commit to. So that's, the expectation for the team communication was this, within the hour of internal response times for everyone in the, within the organization, there was not a delay. We know that when I'm sending something to you, I know within an hour I'll have that response, okay? Um, red response time and they label everything. What it equals, this means what it means for Jeopardy. Um, they Please arrive on the Zoom meeting five minutes before the call starts. As you notice, I was early on the call with you. Same thing, so there's an expectation for everyone on the team. That way, we're honoring each other's time. So I'll stop sharing for a moment. But this gives you a classic example of what you were talking about, how they're handling in the COVID. So just as now the market is making a shift, again, what, we're, what we've been doing, and we started this with, again, three quarters of the teams that I'm coaching with, we started hiring back in May. Now, why did we do that? Because we already could see projections of what was going, where the growth was, and where the opportunity was. And there was two things that were happening. A couple of their team members, some of the team members weren't going to make it. Yeah. And that's okay. It was, it was stressing them too much. Um, and, and, and they were in a position where they couldn't handle it. Um, and it's not like it makes them bad or good. It's just that, that they had other things going on in their life and they wanted to honor them that way. So meanwhile, we were, so we were hiring to top grade. We were also hiring because we had positions to come in for. There's another team I'm coaching where we brought in, we hired a recruiter on the end of February. That recruiter on that team, because um, I coached that recruiter also, we got real, we had clarity about who we were still planning to hire and by when. And we work with that individual. I work with that individual on a weekly basis. Uh, we knew we were gonna be hiring an executive assistant because this gentleman's role was by the end of December, he's completely phased out of the business on the production side. And he's running another business outside of this, meaning commercial, he's getting involved in. Yeah. So we literally have a plan we reverse engineered into what has, what's going to be occurring. And if the market affected us, then we would make some adjustments to it. But the goal didn't change. We pivoted the actions, but the goal didn't change. Does that make sense? hundred uh, percent. Am I, am I speaking? And I need to make sure this is resonating because this is, if I'm going too quick, I'll slow down because what I want you to take away from this is that, we don't deviate from the goal. We're going to change the actions that are going to require still to get to that goal. And the activities or the actions, most of them did uh, tweak or we rewrote the GPS. There was a team that happens to be the number one team in all the Colorado region. Um, and a week ago, uh, um, I had their team on for two hours and their leadership and we rewrote their GPS and their 411s to line up for that to ensure because we're off track and we knew we had to get back on track. And so we rewrote it. So does that give you some clarity about how you should be looking at your business? Absolutely. I think what I'm hearing in that too is kind of what Gary talks about, that emergency room type mentality, right? When, if not now. And yeah. um, so I, I love that. I can definitely relate to that. Um, 
we have, we have about seven minutes left with, uh, with Joe. I want to leave the floor open for some questions. Um, now's a great opportunity to ask uh, just an amazing person and coach um, any type of questions that you may have. I can't be the only one asking questions here. This is a great opportunity. And it's okay. If, if this is a fire hose I gave you, I want you to walk away with mindset, system, and skills and your commitment. Uh, hi, it's Anna. Um, I, I have a question. <laughs> so I do try to create like a structured schedule each day, you know, but obviously things happen and you get sidetracked. Like how do you stay focused to stick to that schedule? That's always been my issue. Do you have clarity in your schedule? Um, when you say your schedule, do you have clarity what is in your schedule in the morning? Um, and are those the 20% of the things that matter most to your business? Do, is the, oh, you're asking me if I have clarity? I yeah, mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I get my day started. I usually wake up 5.30, 6 o'clock every morning, get my day started. Um, and I even the day before write down everything that I'm supposed to do, you know, that I say I'm going to do to my, for myself the next day, um, you know, and even have the times and everything broken out similar to what you had. Um, but it's just, you know, I just, I guess, cause also I'm home now and I just, I'm not as focused as, cause I came from the corporate environment. So I'm used to that structure of being in the office. Yeah, so, um, Anna, and I might be able to answer your question. I hope I can. Here's why I asked that first question is, so, since your answer was yes, if that's your 20%, then um, there's a great quote from Warren Buffett. It says, successful people, um, successful people will, uh, uh, the difference between successful people and very successful people is they're fierce on their nose. So one of the, peop one of the things that helps you out on that is, do you have someone com um, coming to support you like a coach? For example, I'm obviously, I uh, shameful, shamelessly am a Matt's coach and, and I'm more than a big proponent of what Matt's coaching has done to my own team, my own life and my own career, right? So do you have someone like that who can help support you to be fierce on your nose to the things that are the distractions to what matters most in that first, in the, your morning? I do not. And I've been thinking of coaching more and more lately um, because of that whole, especially accountability. Um, so, cause I do need someone to give me, get me, um, make me accountable. <laughs> <clears throat> that I love. So first of all, you've recognized the need for that. And I think that's the major big step because most people still think I can still go do this on my own. And yet we know different than that. We all need somebody and the, and the best person I know is having that coach. Um, Chris is more than happy to give you my information and we can do a one-off on that. I'm looking at Matt Teeter, he's another guy. Mm -hmm. Either one of us can talk with you about the, uh, what a coach can do for you and helping create those disciplines. And, and the other part, and I and hear this in the best way possible, um, that, that morning for me is, um, especially as when I was running as an agent, they used to call me Mr. Robot. And the only reason why was because I was so fierce about what mattered to me most. I wasn't going to let everything else get in the way. And what mattered to me at that time was my family, my friends, and I, and I'm and building that future for my family. And I couldn't allow anything to get in the way of that in that morning hours. So my question for you is, do you have a conviction so strong that even when your family, by the way, my wife used to like to call me up while I was legion. <laughs> oh my, that was a, that was another tape. That was another time when we had a, a good clash. Um, and, and it was because I knew what I was fighting for her and, and it wasn't against her. It's just that she had things happening. That's called a distraction. So that's the question for you, Anna. Do you have that uh, conviction in your life um, that can help that will hold you to that type of level of saying no so that you can say yes to what you want? I, I love that, Joe. And you know, Matt, uh, put in some good comments here, and I 100% agree. You know, top performers have a routine. Um, you know, I have a 411. Um, all of you on this call should have a 411. I look at it every day. I look at my GPS every day. Um, and, I, and I'll add this to what Joe said. Um, I treat every day or my routine like I have a two-minute drill, like in football, right? So I have that one play, that two-minute drill that I'm going to use, you know, every single day. Um, that's going to push me to drive extraordinary results. And it's, it's an everyday thing, right? You have to win that battle every day. So 
I, I'm, I super um, believe in, in having a coach. Um, I just became a match coach. Um, and my coach, Brian Martin, has done amazing things for me. Um, I think he's just an incredible human being and just a, even just a great coach. And uh, without, be honest with you, without him, um, some, of the, some of the things that I've achieved so far, I don't think I would have done without his guidance. And I think that says a lot. Um, you know, I, I, you, have to, you have to have a routine. You know, just like Joe is saying, you know, in the morning, you know, whether it's meditating, exercising, getting your mind right, and then looking at your 411 and having your goal set and knowing what you want to accomplish for the day. Um, super important. And thanks for sharing that, Matt. Appreciate it. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Uh, yeah. one, one other thought with that too, Chris. And I want to yeah. really, <clears throat> this is my fourth shift and we really haven't yet experienced this shift. We've made some adapt, 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 adaptations. There we go, tough word, adaptations to this. The, the real reality is this for us. Um, and that is, it's come. It's, I mean, where and where it's going to get exposed the most, and this is one of the big things where every um, everyone I'm coaching is working on is skills. It's your hard skills and your soft skills. Go to page 156 out of the shift book. It talks about the seven maximums um, and master number one, and that and that is and the number one is to be the student of the market and to know your numbers to the point where you know trending what's happening on a daily basis. You can watch what's occurring in, in your marketplace. Um, that's a hard skill. And that will get exposed rapidly. What gets even exposed more rapidly is your soft skills. Um, the days of the laydowns, if you will, like just to come listening to appointments, um, that's going to shrink, especially as the market does these readjustments. And what gets exposed is your ability to be able to handle objection and to be able to, to um, give them another point of view, which is called the objection handler, and you can close them. Because if you're strong enough, meaning you can listen and you know how to use those soft skills, you can take it down to where you can have six, seven objections, and then they'll eventually say, yeah, well, of course I'll sign up with you. Most people quit on the first or second. So that will be exposed. Love it. I love it. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. Did you ever uh, read or listen to the audiobook? It Takes What It Takes? No. Um, I'll, I'll share it. I'll share it with you through audio, uh, Joe, and anybody else that wants it. It is a phenomenal book. Um, matter of fact, Matt Teeter turned Brian Martin, my coach, onto it, and then Brian turned me onto it. Um, just an amazing, amazing book. Um, so I highly recommend that you guys listen to it or read it. Um, we're up against uh, eight thirty, and Joe, one final thought for everyone. Sure. Um, this one thing, and it's, uh, and I'm going to share that. Uh, do I have one minute, literally? Can I do that? You, you have more than one minute. I'm just trying to be conscious of your time. Well, I purposely blocked out this hour just in case. Um, so here's okay. what I wanted to share right here. We're going to go to the screen, see if I can get it. Yeah, that's it. Perfect. Um, there's, there, there's a couple of people in my life right now that really resonate with me. One guy's name is Charlie Munger. And those who don't know Charlie Munger, he's Warren Buffett's business partner. Yeah. Um, that he's a brilliant dude. They're both still alive. They're both in their 90s. Here's what he said. I constantly see people rise in life who are not the smartest, sometimes not even the most diligent, but they're learning machines. They go to bed every night a little wiser than they were when they got up. And boy, does that help, particularly when you have a long run ahead of you. Love that thought. That's, I love that. Yeah. And, and, and yeah, um, and they got some great books. So here's another quote from him. We both, meaning uh, Charlie and Warren, insist on having time of being available most every day just to sit and think. This is a very uncommon in American business. We read and think. So this goes to the guy named Keith Cunningham, which is the book called Road Less Stupid. Gary had us um, ask yep. us to read earlier this year from his masterminds. And he right. actually, Keith Cunningham and on. I've become a big Keith Cunningham fan and in The Road Less Stupid. And Keith talks about having thinking time also and, the, and being purposeful about that. So that's my new habit stack, by the way, is um, I am getting into the discipline more and more of spending time just asking questions and thinking. Um, that was not a discipline that I had ever created. I just did it when I needed to. And I'm realizing the value of doing this more. So here's what he said. Here are the, some questions I ask myself on a regular basis to ensure that I'm setting up my business for success. 
First one is, what am I doing to inspire and lead my team? Now, if you don't have a team and it's you, that's the question for you individually, okay? Because you can't inspire others if you're not inspired. Number two, what don't I see? What are the blind spots, right? Getting that revealed. By the way, your coach will help you with this too if you have a coach. And he talks about how might I, and what he did is you'll notice this one little word instead of, um, he took the word might instead of can. Why he said is it opens other variables to the question you're gonna ask yourself. Your mind can go in different, three different ways rather than just a one direct by, um, or by um, a binomial type way. Um, and then the last one, how do my customers, clients, and target market define success specifically? Don't think you know, go ask the questions so that you can find out, ask them. Their, your people will tell you where they're going and then you get to move the ball quicker instead of assume. Okay, so that's it. You know, it's funny you brought, that's, by, by the way, that's amazing stuff. Um, I, we had our, my, my real estate team with my partner, Sol, and we had our meeting yesterday. And one of the questions I wanted everyone to ask themselves is, how do you inspire yourself? And it kind of leads to that first point that you, how do you inspire others? And I think you add to it is how do you inspire yourself? Because I think it starts with yourself first. Yeah, it does. And that's by like what Munger talked about and is um, be purposeful. Um, uh, yeah, we all have times we, we take a break. I get that we're all because we're human beings. And yet at the same time, create this to become a, a constant habit in your life. Be a constant learner. Yeah. All right. Well, awesome. Joe, I, I can't even tell you how much this means to us for you pouring into us. And um, Thank you you're, you're, you're an amazing person. Um, and if there's anything that, that I or our market center can do for you or your market centers, please um, don't hesitate to reach out. And, and likewise for me also, if there's anything else, I, um, I'm more than happy to share this. So thank you all. I appreciate you, Joe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.